Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Kaufman, a retired family doctor and a CLL patient myself, the co-founder, executive vice president, and chief medical officer of the nonprofit CLL Society. Con? Hi, I am Con Tam. I am a professor of hematology at Monash University and head of the CLL and lymphoma service at the Alpha Hospital in Melbourne, Australia. So we're talking to each other from thousands of miles away after the American Society of Hematology. And you were the lead author on a, an important paper that looked at one of the main drugs where you were also one of the major researchers in, in, on this drug, Xanabrutin, of a new BTK inhibitor, um, not so new anymore. And you're looking at some of the longest and most durable data on that. And that's very important to me because response rates are great with the, the BTK inhibitors, Ibrutinib, Xanabrutinib, Acalabrutinib, and Pertabrutinib. But the durability of the response is what I worry about as a patient. And you were looking at that data specifically, some of the best data that we have on that. So tell us a little bit about the study, how it was designed, and what your findings were. Sure, thank you. So I was very lucky to have, um, be really at the very first, uh, very start of the Zendabrutin study, having treated the first 25 patients ever in the world with Zendabrutinib, and also leading uh, the subsequent phase one study combining Xanabrutinib plus Obinutuzumab. So the two studies in the world that first treated patients with Xanabrutinib was the Xanabrutinib phase one by itself, and then there was also another study that they combined Xanabrutinib with Obinutuzumab. Now, the second study um, it really um, is not being continued in CLL patients, uh, but in combination, those two studies gave us the patients who had been treated the longest in the world of this drug. And some of these patients went on drug uh, in 2014, 2015. So close to 10 years ago. Uh, and we took all those patients and we say, what are the long-term outcomes of patients with COL? What are the long-term side effects and how durable are the responses? Uh, so in aggregate, the medium follow-up for these two studies and the patients in the COL in these two studies are six and a half years. Uh, and what we showed was that, uh, firstly, that with um, the progression of time, that the side effect profiles um, are actually quite benign. So there is no unexpected side effects with prolonged therapy beyond the first two years. So we looked at the side effect for second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth year of treatment. Uh, and the only sort of consistent side effect that lasted over the period of time is in risk of infections. As you know, infection is a big problem for patients with COL on any treatment. Uh, and, um, and then also there is a, a small risk of, uh, of bleeding over time, all of which are minor bleeding, minor bruising. Uh, and that's because then the bruising, just like any BDK inhibitor, is a, uh, does affect the function of the, of the platelet, the clotting in the blood. But importantly- The cardiac side effects that we see with ibrutinib and uh the other BTK inhibitors, the hypertension, the atrial fibrillation, and even the sudden death, was that, was that a factor? Uh, so, so the sudden death is, is a very low number. So um, we haven't seen an accumulation of that. The atrial fibrillation remains at less than 2% per year. Uh, so it's a, it's a low risk and does not snowball and accumulate with time. And with hypertension, um, with a very long follow-up, you know, one in five patients, 20% of patients have some degree of hypertension but then these are patients who started when they were 71 years old. So you expect, you know, over a six year period that a lot of 71 year old patients will end up getting hypertension irrespective of, you know, whether they're, they're on drug or whether they're just normal aging. So we haven't really seen any concern or signals over time and in particular, not a exponential, you know, accumulation of uh, cardiovascular side effects. Um, yeah. And you can tell Sorry. us about the efficacy of the, how, how well yeah, it works. Absolutely. absolutely. The good so, stuff. Yeah, the, the, the good stuff. Uh, okay. So uh, I, I think the most interesting data will be in patients who are, uh, who are basically getting first-line treatment um, uh, um, and with monotherapy, uh, so, so not contaminated by the effect of obinutuzumab, because people want to know if you're going to start first-line therapy with xanabrutinib, what are your chances of getting into a deep response? And actually, the complete remission rate is actually up to uh, 
36 uh, percent now. So one in three patients, well, all the patients responded, 100 percent response rate, but the complete remission rate is continuing to improve over time, and it's now up to 36 percent, which is um. Uh, really nice to know because if you will remember back when we first started PDK inhibitors, we thought that nobody would get complete remission. But now that we know that with the persistence of time and using it in the first line setting, that some patients can clear the disease um, in terms of morphologic complete remission. And I think that gives us some reassurance that if these patients need to stop the treatment because of side effects or other reasons in the future that they're not going to be that straight away. That they're going to stay in remission for hopefully a number of years before they need to be retreated. So that's the first thing, that there is an ongoing rate of uh, improving complete remission. And in terms of durability, uh, in terms of uh, at the five-year mark, uh, what the, the median progression-free survival, so the median time that people stay in remission for, for first-line uh, xenobrutinib has not been reached, okay? Uh, the median for patients in the relapse refractory setting is seven years. So you start xenobrutinib in the relapse refractory setting, you've got a seven-year remission duration on average. But the median has not been reached for first line. And, and in fact, at the six-year mark, uh, over 76% uh, of patients were still in. So over three in four patients at the six-year mark are still in remission on xenobrutinib in first line. And that really supports what we see um, from the later xenobrutinib studies where patients uh, were treated in the first line, but with shorter follow-up. And I think the curves is reassuring that at the six-year mark, that you know three quarters of patients will still be in remission at, at that time. Well, that's pretty exciting new and very reassuring. And, um, and it's the newest of the covalently binding BTK inhibitors. And now that we have data, some of which is 10 years old, along it's 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 hard to call it the new kid on the block it's really it's been around for a while and it's really showing a durable response so very exciting any final thoughts or anything you want to share with the patient community about this trial ah uh, nothing in particular except to thank the patients who um you know back in australia back in 2014 um put up the faith in us and started themselves on this study so we're very thankful well, Dr. Tan, thank you for your insights and your vigor in researching this. Thanks so much. Thank you.